Hi, this is Bill Zajac from JustChemistry.org. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about linear interpolation. And what is linear interpolation, or what is interpolation? It's a way to find new data points within a range of data points. We see it all the time when we're doing experiments, when we're looking up data. Um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And it'll help you uh, become more accurate. Um, I'm going to plug in some uh, data here that I've taken right off uh, Z charts for uh, probability curves. Uh, and this is going to show you that even though in a case where we have a nonlinear function and we're plotting Z against areas, um, if the points on the graph are close enough, we can assume that they're linear for the purposes of interpolation. And I'll show you how, that, how we do that. Uh, in this case here, what we're looking for is uh, a Z number for the area that would represent a point, .490. Uh, this would be in response to answer a question where we would be asked for something that had a 99% probability. And so in order to do that, we'd need to know our Z value. And the, the Z value for 99, well, we know that this half is 0.5. And so we just add that to 0.49, and, and our total would become 0.99, which is 99% of the area underneath this probability curve. And we look up on our charts, and we have old charts, and they only give us, let's pretend here, we, they only give us two Z numbers, 2.30 and 2.40. And, and I have them in this little table here, where we're plotting the zone Zs to the known areas on the chart. And this is the 0.4893 for 2.3, and this is the area for uh, 2.4. And here's the area, 0 0.49108. And what do we have here? We have, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a Z value uh, that has an area of 0 0.4900. Uh, this is the first step in interpolation. You lay out this little uh, chart here, X, uh, X and Y. Uh, y123 and uh, X123. Uh, These two rows represent um, one slope. Uh, the row 3 and row 1 represent the other slope. And we assume that they're linear and they're all equal to each other. And so you start off by writing this equation, the slope of the rows in 1 and 2, that's delta y over this delta x, is the same as the slope of this row, which is a delta y 3 over 1 and a delta x uh, 3 over 1. Uh, writing that out, uh, expanding it a little bit, uh, this is what it looks like. There's your delta y over delta x for the two uh, rows 1 and 2. And here's the delta y over uh, delta x for the rows uh, 1 and 3. Uh, rearranging this equation algebraically, and this is what you come up with. Uh, you can actually uh, write this little puppy down in your, inside a cover of your chemistry book, and you'll be glad you did, because at some point you'll do it. But let's, uh, let's plug some numbers in and, and show you how it works. <clears throat> here's, the, uh, here's the equation again, and here's the numbers off that chart. And this was our x1 uh, value for z, 2.300, and here was the uh, x3 minus x1. Here's our y2 minus y1, and here's our y3 minus y1. Plugging these numbers in, this is what we get, and we crank it out one step further, and here's our answer. So now we say, we can say that our... Uh, 4,900, okay, uh, has a Z value of uh, 2.328. Now this is an estimate, um, and let's take a look at some real actual uh, Z table areas to see how close we got. In this case, um, what we started off with was 2.3 and 2.4, and I interpolated between these two numbers, and I got this 2.328. Now in my actual chart, it has uh, three uh, significant figures, so I was able to compare it to something actually a little bit closer. And so uh, if I look at the actual chart for 2.33 and 2.3, this is this takes me a little over 4.900. This takes me a little under 0 0.4900. And here's the number that we were looking for, and there's the number we derived. Not bad. I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck with your chemistry, and uh, these rock. 